Pete here with the Small Business Resource Center.com and the Small Business Resource Center YouTube channel. Um, the Small Business Resource Center is a tool to help you improve your business. We focus on personal life, you're managing your business and, and uh, developing your business. So when you're a small business owner, of course, all this is all encompassing. So that's what we're here for. One thing that we're focusing on today is an important topic that I keep getting questions about, and that's getting an increase on your EIDL or a reconsideration. So I'm sharing the email that I got from the SBA. This is the actual email, by the way. So you want to follow this pretty much step by step, and I'll review this with you again. But it says to submit your increase request, you have to include your most recent filed tax return, <clears throat> sign form 4506T, so the instructions <coughs> as well as the actual form is right here. I'm going to put that form up so you can see it. So 45T, first page is the instructions so you can read and understand it. The next page is pretty much pre-filled out. You can type this in. So you put your information, if it's a joint return, you have to put whoever's first, then you second, your information, address, previous address if needed, and your customer file number. That would be your account number. <clears throat> and they're requesting these periods, 16, 17, and 18. Then of course you have to sign and then uh, return them. That would be form one. Once you have 4506T completed, you have to do form 3502. And 3502 basically is your economic injury, disaster loan supporting information. So this was part of the application. And the reason why they did this is because a lot of people may have filled this out improperly. So you wanna put your gross revenue for the 12 month period prior to the disaster, your cost of goods sold for the 12 months. So cost of goods sold is basically all the expenses you've had. So it's pretty simple. You just get that information. If you're looking at your tax returns, that that's typically your all your deductions together would be your cost of goods sold. And if you have <clears throat> rental properties, you could put lost rents due to the disaster. If you're a nonprofit or agricultural, you could put 12 months period of the disaster. Operating expenses, excuse me. <clears throat> and then if you want to put um, compensation from other sources received as a result from the disaster, if you have anything there, then you have to fill this out, of course, sign it and return that. Now getting back to the form, <clears throat> typically, um, they're very specific. They say if you're getting an increase, put the word increase here. From my understanding, you can, for a reconsideration, you can put reconsideration also if you're just getting a reconsideration. Don't forget your account number. That's also important. It says your application number and the exact word increase. And you can send it to this email address, pdc.reconsideration at sba.gov or PDC recon s recons at sba.gov. I was told both these email addresses go to the same location. Uh, this is the one I was actually given, but I was emailed from this one. I was told they're both exactly the same. Um, you can also mail your application if you wanna mail it back. I wanna keep in mind what we're told is it takes about five weeks. Um, speed up the process and that's by calling asking for a tier two representative and asking them if they got the information and to notate your call so if you're calling that would be 800-659-2955 and of course ask for a tier two representative <clears throat> they are also telling you that you can apply for the paycheck protection program and when you send this in you want to keep in mind 
this is why I'm going over this. It says, please include an explanation of why you need an increase or why you need a reconsideration. So whatever your reason for reconsideration would be, <clears throat> you have to notate that. You know, for an increase, you can say, this is not enough money. My cost of goods sold is X. I'm in, let's just say me being in the real estate business and in my state, they actually consider us non-essential. So I was not able to work for three months. Um, and you got to keep in mind a business like the, the real estate business, it kind of flows. You don't instantly make money. It actually takes time to ramp up a real estate business. It's typically not an on and off switch. Um, so you can explain exactly why you've had problems, you know, what it would quarantine customers not coming in because they're scared, you know, whatever your concerns would be. And then you also want to note the fact that <clears throat> you're open now and you do expect that you'll be able to make uh, the payments that are going to be required. So, you know, you would note that and explain that you're going to be using this for expenses of your business. And basically that's it. It's pretty simple. So once you have all that together, um, keep in mind, if you're under a hundred thousand, the paycheck protection program can give you eight weeks a forgivable loan to cover payroll and expenses. EDIL is a great program too, but the problem is the PPP program is not really done properly if you ask me because 100,000 is not much for a self-employed business person. <clears throat> it's really a small amount. Um, all right, and that's the instructions. It's pretty simple there. This is Pete with the small business resource center.com smash the like button. If this helped you subscribe to my channel, comment if you need help or have other questions, but this is the exact instructions that I got. <clears throat> All right. Have a great day.